Welcome back to another edition of Spencer, Matt, and Charlie Talk About Racing. We are at the kickoff of the 2024 Indoor National Series hosted by Jay Concepts. We have the pleasure of being in Brookfield, Wisconsin at the beautiful Trackside Hobbies and Raceway. Uh, Spencer and Matt are going to talk about some of the stuff that you guys asked us questions about in our previous video um, in regards to speed control tuning and some of the stuff that's happened with the new Associated B7. So boys, put it on you now. From the previous generation car to this one, lots of speed control changes, a little bit of speed control changes. Matt, talk to us a little bit about the, the spec program and what you found with the testing so far. Um, yeah, I think uh, a lot of the stuff that we've had to do is it just kind of accommodate with the five-year like transmission, the amount of load that it puts on the stock motors. Uh, myself, uh, me and the Raymonds have geared up two teeth from what we ran on the previous car. So instead of 75, 29, we're at 75, like 31. Okay. Uh, we're about uh, eight to four degrees less of timing on track to track. Um, so with the, the new five year stuff, the amount of load that's being put on the car, uh, you're trying to just get the motor in an efficiency range. Okay. Instead of having it, you know, uh, like top out, like with RPM, you're putting like less timing in it. So it's running more efficient throughout the run. Yeah, it seems like um, from modified watching the stock guys with the new vehicles um, the new two wheel drive out there nowadays uh that the kind of the sound of the, the the vehicle itself is a lot different than the old previous model and you know for most people they've they kind of tuned by how it sounds uh, as well and now that it's completely different transmission there's a couple more gears in the gearbox um, as Matt was saying, that he preferred um, two extra more teeth than what he previously ran on the old vehicle um, that we had from Team Associated. All the, the TLRs and the Associated um, vehicles, X-Ray and um, Schumacher, the final drive ratio is basically the same, if not the same. So for those who are watching, it's definitely something to keep an eye on as far as your gear ratios, um, you know, your pinion and spur gear. Now here at Trackside, this is a much smaller track yeah. than the video that we did when we were at Hoosier. And um, for me personally, with running modified, um, having basically infinite, infinite amounts of power, <laughs> um, I was actually playing with a lot of pinion gear stuff this past weekend um, so far, and I actually preferred running a little bit of a smaller pinion gear, but also tuning more of like the boost settings. And obviously for stock, you're not able to do that. Um, but the one thing I will say about the gearing on the stock cars, from my also experience, and I'm not sure if you guys notice it too, but it seems like when I adjust the, the pinion gear on whether it's mod or stock or helping someone out, I can definitely feel that the brakes change quite yeah, a bit. For sure. Um, so in my opinion, maybe Matt will agree, when you go up on the pinion gear, it actually thinks it has a lot less brakes because um, it's a lot more freewheeling, yeah. um, like a like a, a heavier flywheel in an 8-scale vehicle. So what have you done or learned? I mean, do you feel like you need to, is it a, a much big change for you when you go up for the two teeth, two teeth? Do you adjust your brakes? You know, what do you look for when you adjust your speed control settings once it comes to um, gearing? Do you I, prefer adjusting it in the radio? Do you prefer adjusting it on the speed control? So on the speed control stuff, I've been running the drive like frequency back or the brake like frequency backwards just to like it's softer at the. When he says that, it's the variable brake frequency, the chart that's in yeah. there. You can set the brake curve and you can set frequencies per throttle position or brake position in this situation. Yeah. yeah. So when he says backwards, normal thinking is low frequency at the start, high frequency at the end. So Matt, is, go on. You, yeah. Now you go. So, just trying to make the. Uh, the hit of it like a little like softer at the beginning and then then stronger at the end. Um, I feel like that has kind of like tamed down the brakes like a good amount like with all right. the gears in the transmission. And then then when you're gearing up and stuff like that, trying to get the feel to be the same sure. as what it was before. Now the overall brake strength, are you adjusting that? Um, or do you have a set number that you run and then, then you're adjusting the variable brake frequency yeah so i usually have a set number uh at 87 okay and then after that i just mess with the variable brake, brake frequency that on my radio i run it a little lower awesome um i know i did see in one of the questions um on some of the videos that we did already in the past the um just stock speed control or the you know our stock spec speed controls are you able to people are asking are you able to tune the variable um brake frequencies on those speed controls Sadly, no. Uh, Just Stock has no frequency tuning. Uh, stock Spec does, but not the variable frequency. Yeah. 
Um, the good news is if you're keen on watching approval websites, there's a new stock spec coming out, and that may or may not have variable frequency. It does. Well, that's cool. I mean, uh, that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to hit on um, in these kind of videos is kind of talking about a little bit of the product. Also, some of the, you know, the hot, the, from the low end to the high end speed control stuff that we have to offer, and obviously with our new speed control coming out to the Just Stock, that was pretty cool to see. They built in the capacitor, which is really neat. Um, so I'm sure you guys, Matt and the um, Raymond twins, are going to get those to test at the SDRC. Um, another thing that I wanted to bring up was the OTA, um, the live data. Uh, onboard data logging was one that we, we overlooked yeah. through most of our early days at Hobbywing, not even realizing that it was a feature. But if you run with an OTA installed on an XE run speed control, you get the bonus data log where it'll record your whole run. Yeah. Um, Spencer spent some time and actually logged more runs than I'd care to tell you about because <laughs> yeah. it's so much spreadsheeting. All day, all really. day Wednesday, I was here at Trackside doing a little bit of um, the data logging uh, for several runs, half the day basically. And um, later in the video, we'll show you um, a little bit of the uh, overlook of kind of what it what it looks like, kind of the things that I want to show you what's important what's kind of not so important that way it's a it's a lot of information it's honestly a little bit overwhelming um until you kind of um really start to piece the things that are really important with the graph because it shows you really really important stuff when it comes to rpms voltage drop um especially through your five or ten minute stint of the the window especially if you guys are tuning with batteries you can definitely tell whether you run a 4800 milliamp battery which is the fin packs versus a 6400 milliamp battery, you can see when on the, you know, the two, three, four, six or seven minute mark, depending on how long your mains are, of when the voltage is dropping. And to me, for stock racing, I know Matt, that's super important, yeah. um, especially when it comes to having the most amount of power towards your end of the run. Especially if there's a triple, you yeah. know, here, you know, there's not a triple that stock is doing, but for mo most of the races that we go to, there's usually a jump where stock's you know, doing there's something. There's usually a, a jump that the stock guys can jump. You know, Charlie, I wanted to talk to you about kind of this, the events that you've been going to. The Hoosier was your kind of first debut event. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you're not you're not no sludge when it comes <laughs> to races. It's been a while since I've gotten out to races I haven't already been to, I guess yeah. you'd say. And it's certainly been a while since I've been to permanent indoor facilities that have dedicated racetracks that are available for club racing on a regular basis. A lot of the races I go to are like Cleveland or pop-up or hotel races, Chili Bowl, which is a one-off type of event. So the atmosphere and the, the that is all different. Uh, from when you come to a place like Trackside or you go to a place like Hoosier Complex where there's locals there that race there all the time, there's dedicated staff that they don't do this because they're getting rich working at a hobby shop. They do it for the pure joy and the passion that they have for this hobby and wanting more people to get into this stuff. So uh, it's been a very unique experience for me to kind of see both sides of that, that the vacation racing, if you will, still happens at these venues and folks will bring their family out, hang out at the track all weekend and kind of just spend time at this at a facility taking everything they have to offer from using their snack shop to buying their sodas here to all that stuff it's kind of great to see and more so the locals that uh chip in and help out with all the things that they do to keep a successful local racetrack in business and successful like these guys are diehards at these tracks yeah. and i think that uh if you're a track owner and you got some locals that love the place do what you need to do to keep those guys happy because yeah. they're the ones yeah. that make the guys come back. Uh, they're the ones that help a racer out when they have a problem. They'll loan them a speed control. They'll give them a body. They'll throw them a set of tires. Those are the folks that really make the difference to kind of keep this hobby alive. And tracks are fantastic. You guys do a ton as owners. You guys do a ton as business operators that have to put up with the margins that we have in this industry. So hats off to all yeah. of you for doing that. For sure. And the amount of blood, sweat, and beers that go into this industry <laughs> is pretty amazing. And uh, my hat's off to all you guys. I'm looking forward to traveling around with Matt to do a couple more races. I get to go to the Nationals and a few more after that. I'm going to try to hit some more of these INS races because I think it's important for the chops to hear it from, I don't want to say a guy like me, but somebody who's worked in this industry for a very long time. I've made my living off of these tracks being successful. And I think that places that are hosting these events, they, they, they deserve every bit of thanks yeah. and appreciation that we can give them. So. Yeah, they seem to be um, the successful ones 
And obviously, like you said, it's not easy to be successful as a hobby shop. Any business. Uh, any yeah. business. But even general. more so, yeah. And, you know, people like Jamie here, the family that they have here working, Hobby Action, LCRC, I mean, uh, SDRC, I can name off a dozen more. Um, you know, they've been able to really find what they're good at and continue to focus on things that they're comfortable with doing and, you know, understanding what they're really good at and keep pushing that. Um, it's Whether it's, you know, adding some new classes to their local club races, which is we've been able to kind of hammer down of the new, um, or our, our uh, you know, just stock motors, the handout timing um, motors, which it's kind of helped a lot of rebirth people kind of get back into the hobby mm -hmm. Like the twenty one five lock timing, the seventeen five. It's a little different than a just lock. We call it the handout spec program, and they're four pole high K or low K V motors that are equivalent to seventeen five, twenty one five, and thirteen five. And the reason I mention that they're four pole is because it makes the cheaters really have no chance. There's no parts that go with these that are gonna make them better or worse. Yeah. And it makes it very easy for a track to have you only race these motors, these speed controls here. And because they're four pole. You can kind of gear them till you turn blue in the face, and all they do is slow down. They don't overheat or burn up. It's yeah. been kind of a godsend for a lot of these places that just want something simple to for folks yeah, to race people not to worry about. Yeah. yeah, with these races, obviously, you know, big shout out to Jay Concepts for the you know with their entire indoor series. You know, we've been a supporter for many many years now, and um, you know we get to travel around to you know five locations throughout this year. Um, this particular year we, is our first time starting. Um, the multi-surface, so there's no right. NCTS now or INS. We just have just the one INS J Concept series, um, which will be, you know, three dirt races and two artificial surfaces. Um, the next one that we're going to be going to is the RC1, which is in uh, Michigan, um, which is going to be pretty fun. I'm yeah. sure you're going to be going yeah. to that, and Charlie, uh, and myself. So yeah, you know, big big shout out to to Jason and the J Concepts crew for allowing us to um, to to travel to these awesome tracks and um, experience um, different tracks across the country. You know, they've had it at several different tracks over the years and they kind of rotate it to kind of share the love between these different racetracks. Um, this is the first time it's ever been here at Trackside yeah. and this place has been here for forever. Right. But um, yeah, I think other than that, I'm, I'm pretty stoked for how this weekend's going. Um, Matt, you're starting a P2 in yep. stock. Um, you know, maybe give a shout out to um, kind of the, what you've done and the people that have helped you, and I'm sure the Raven Twins have yeah. been super pumped on how uh, you've been able to help them out. Um, yeah, you want to just give it a rundown? Of yeah, uh, I'm sure uh, seeing me running stock for most people isn't a awesome thing, but uh, for for for, my, for myself, it's just able to help out uh, the Raymond Twins. Uh, like I'm able to do fast, fast like setup changes and test out gearing, you know, timing, all this fun stuff to see like what could be better. So well, I think it's good. I mean, dude, you've you have so much experience um, running mod stock. Um, people want to hear your expertise. Um, I have trust. I'm gonna. I want to build a stock car for Hobby Action to tinker tinker with there locally. And um, yeah, I think you're doing an awesome job. The Raymond Twins are kicking butt this weekend. We have um, a lot of. We have a big team here this weekend. We're running mod and stock, and it's um, kind of um, pretty cool to see. And thank you guys for watching behind the camera and supporting us throughout um, the racing year. And Charlie, you want to kind of wrap things up here? Yeah, no, it's been great. Uh, we got a couple cars in every main in the stock division, which, like I said last year, we couldn't give away a motor, and this uh, they're they're beating the doors down. So, good job, buddy. Good job. <laughs> it's, it's been great. But uh, yeah, no, hats off to everybody for the support, reaching out to us, contact. I got a ton of emails from you guys about tuning stuff, and I definitely appreciate everybody reaching out with your very direct, well-worded questions because it gets us an opportunity to share that information with you. It's stuff that I talk about all the time, but I think folks need it, you know, told back to them directly. So if you guys have questions. Shoot us an email. It's charlie at hobbywing.com and gonzalez at hobbywing.com. We also have a YouTube channel. It's called Hobbywing Official. You're probably watching that on this as well as Spencer's channel and wherever else we can get it. Uh, we do a podcast where we talk about all sorts of nerdery and we give away free stuff. It's uh, called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. Just look it up on your favorite podcast service. You can send us an email to enter to win. To find that email, you got to listen to a show, though. So please, RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. Look it up. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you all next time. Yeah, thank yep. you. Thank you guys.